Hello, my name is Russell Preston Brown from Adobe Systems. And in this presentation, I'm going to be talking about the new adaptive wide angle feature found in Adobe Photoshop CS6. Let's take a look. Now here I have an image of the fine Adobe building in downtown San Jose. It's a great example of using this new technique. First of all, if you were going to correct this in the old way, you might go to lens correction. In this case, it automatically detects the metadata for this lens and applies a correction to it. It looks interesting, but you have no control over it. But now, check this out. Once again, up to my filter menu and down to adaptive wide angle right here. With this new tool, you have control over the exact areas of the image that you want to adjust. Check this out. It's automatically detecting the metadata within this image. And it detects that this is a Nikon camera with an 8.5 millimeter lens. If I go up here to the right, you can see that it's selected auto. It's projecting this based upon the metadata and taking a good guess at it. But I can go farther with this. If I click here on the screen and drag with my mouse, you can notice that it follows the contours and shape of that building. If I let go, it then aligns and straightens that section of the image. An enormous amount of control. I want to do that here on the left side here as well. So look at that control I have. Now this is what I really like. Check this out. If I hold down the shift key, then drag, the line changes to this purple magenta shade, which indicates that that's going to be a true vertical. Bingo. I can do the same thing over here to the left. The shift key is the modifier that makes sure that that area becomes perfectly vertical. Now there's an image, a distortion that I've created that I think is really, really unique. It's not an automatic distortion, it's something I want. Now I may be bothered by these lines up here at the top, so once again, if you don't like it, straighten it. The shift key then straightens the top of the building right here, just like this. I may want to maintain the curvature of the building here for aesthetic reasons, or I could go in and straighten it. I think what I want to do is straighten the base here. I'm going to hold the shift key down and drag here to the right. The shift key dragging to the right in this case will create a defined horizontal line and shift that. Did you see that? <laughs> that is so fantastic. Then let's scale this up to get the image we're looking for. So it's the ultimate way to control the distortion of the image based upon the metadata. And since this image had metadata, it went to auto and I could control it in this way in a very accurate way. Now, if I'm all done here and I click OK, we all know that we have a great feature in Photoshop that does an automatic fill, the content aware fill. I could go in and fill that section as well. But I'm going to move along here because I want to show you some other situations that you might encounter. The next one right here is a situation where I want to get rid of the distortion, but I happen to know that this particular shot was taken before metadata was applied to images. Let's see what happens. So no metadata. Let's go up here and down to adaptive wide angle. It's analyzing the image. It knows the model of the camera. It even knows the lens that it used. But check this out. It doesn't say auto, which indicates that it didn't have enough metadata information to calculate the correct distortion. So it's by default guessing that this is fisheye. It's a pretty good guess. Let's leave it on fisheye, but keep in mind to try some of the other projection models. You may get a projection model that more suits what your final destination is. But in this case, I'm going to use the best guess of fisheye. Now check this out. I'm going to draw a line along this background section here just like this. Now notice it's not perfect. We know that it should be following the exact contours of this field. We know that that line in the distance is perfectly straight. At least we hope so. 
Notice that it's not perfect. But this is the greatest thing because if this is fisheye and it's not automatic, you have control over this point here in the center. Watch as I bend this up or down. This is only possible when you're in this fisheye mode and you do not have enough metadata. You now are creating your own profile for this image by moving this line. Exactly along that line I let go. It recalculates and determines that the actual focal length of the lens is not 15, but in fact 15.77. I've been told by experts there's actually a little bit of fudge factor there that we're actually determining the true focal length of the lens by drawing this perfect line along something that should be straight. Very, very cool. So now I've created a profile for this particular lens even though I don't have the actual metadata. Once again, go in and draw your lines and to straighten things up. Also notice that if you click on these endpoints of this circular shape, you can then readjust this and you can get some pretty crazy things happening. You can start to make lines appear in different angles than they really should within the image to create some very odd distorted fields if you want to you're very welcome to, and that's the beauty of the control of this. So as we saw in this situation, we're creating our own warp distortion by determining the focal length by dropping in that line and then readjusting it. Uh, once again, we can go in and scale this up when we're all done um, eliminating some of the area around it, and we, of course, have to go in and rebuild this forward section with content-aware fill or um, with cloning tools. Okay. That's situation number two. Situation number three. How many times have you done a panorama? We've done photo merge inside of Photoshop. And there's always a little bit of a curvature to it, especially in this case, since I'm using a wide angle lens. The stitching looks really great, but you want to straighten it. I used to do this with Puppet Warp, but now with adaptive wide angle, it's going to analyze the image. Once again, looking at the metadata, which is still contained within the composite of all my images, it's taking a guess that this is a panorama. I don't exactly like the projection model that it's chosen. So as I said earlier, try some of the others. In this case, I'm going to try fisheye, and I like it. I like the way it's spreading it out. And this is fantastic. Oh, watch this. All I have to do is hold down the shift key, the modifier, and tell it, once again, what items are perfectly vertical. And the doorways are perfectly vertical. <laughs> this is so easy. So I just go through and select the doorways. And as I go across here and assign this, it instantly starts to straighten all the edges. A really nice capability. Let's do this one over on the left here as well. And then finally, let's draw some more straight lines here across the base so I can really start to straighten up um, the sections of the image. And I'm drawing shorter segments. The projection isn't perfect, so I tend to draw shorter segments to start to align things up across the image. Oh, there's always one thing more to do. Let's align those across the top. So you can continue to work on it and once again scale it up um, until you get the image you're looking for, but wow, it, it really is nice to have a capability of working on a stitched panorama in this fashion. So there you have it. I'll click OK on that one. You've seen my three different examples. Example number one, where you have the metadata and you can follow the contours and make adjustments. Number two, no metadata within the image, where you can create your own profile by dragging the center point and then finally, a photo merge where you can do some really incredible work to straighten um, a photo merged image. This is a quick overview of some of my favorite tips and techniques using the new adaptive wide angle feature here inside of Adobe Photoshop CS6. Give it a try.